The double entry system is an extremely important part of creating the financial information. When we create financial information, we need to understand the effect that every single transaction has on the statement of financial position, on the statement of profit or loss. So when we think about a transaction and when a transaction happens in a business, we've got to make sure that we understand the impact of that transaction so that we can record it right in the beginning to make sure that when you do prepare the statement of financial position, the statement of profit or loss, you know what to do with that transaction. It's very important to be able to identify transactions and understand that there's a possibility that one transaction might result in two or more things happening. So our starting point is to make sure that at the very beginning, you're very comfortable with the fact that every transaction that takes place is going to affect more than one account, more than one element of the financial statements. Right in the beginning, right in the introduction, I said to you, we've got to be careful about the fact that we understand that money doesn't come from nowhere and it doesn't disappear either. If you go to the shops and buy a hamburger, you're handing over 30 Rand, but you're also receiving a hamburger. There are two things that's happening there. You're giving something away and you're getting something. So just because we don't have the money anymore doesn't mean that we don't have anything. So these transactions or this example is intended to show you the types of transactions that you may come across and how they impact the basic accounting equation. The information you're going to need to know here is your basic accounting equation and the understanding that it's always got to be in balance. If you're not comfortable with that, you need to go back to study unit two and learn the accounting equation and understand why it moves the way it does. You also need to understand the elements of the financial statement. Your assets, your liabilities, your equity, your profit and loss, income expenses, you've got to make sure that you understand the elements of the financial statement. And when we look at our profit or loss, we've got to understand how it impacts our equity. When we are preparing the statement of financial position, we've got to make sure that we understand the impact that your income and expenses would have on the equity itself. So these items you need to make sure you understand. We introduced you to these in study unit two. We spoke about these in study unit two and three, and this one was discussed in study unit three. So make sure that you go back and understand that. Using that information, let's take a look at a couple of examples. I'm going to explain them quite slowly. The first couple of them going to go through why they are the way they are, how they work. Then I want you to go and do the rest of them yourself and make sure that you're comfortable with why they move the way they do. This information is crucial for your fundamental understanding because we're going to take this a lot further. When we start and when we carry on with creating, we need to then understand how we actually create the financial information from here. And these are the basic building blocks we're going to work with. So Tim started a garden service business on the 1st of March 2013. He entered into the following transactions during March. On the 2nd of March, he deposited 100,000 Rand into the bank account of the business as capital. So now we're looking at the bank account and we're looking at the fact that he's put this in as capital. When we have a business, when we have an entity, we spoke in the previous study units about the fact that an entity is separable from the individual. So an entity has a separate, separate set of financials. It has a separate bank account. It's a separate business. That means that whatever happens in Tim's life and his personal life is irrelevant as far as the business is concerned. If Tim goes and spends money on something in his personal capacity, it does not impact the business. The only time the business is impacted is if Tim takes money out of the business or Tim puts money into the business. But when we look at the bank account, we are looking at the viewpoint from the business. We always look at our financials from the business's viewpoint. And the business is going to have a small part of it that shows you that the owner's share of the business is X amount. So from the viewpoint of the business, the business now has an additional 100,000 Rand in assets. Your bank is an asset. It is a current asset. It represents economic benefits that are going to flow towards the entity. Your capital is your equity, the owner's share of the business. If this business had to stop right here, the amount in the business that have 100,000 Rand in the bank account and the business, the owner's share of the business would be 100,000 Rand. And there's no impact on liabilities, so we can see that the equation balances. Let's take a look at the next one. Tim purchased two lawnmowers for his business and paid for them out of the bank account. Again, we can see that the bank account of the business is going to be affected. They amounted to 8,000 Rand. So the first thing we find out is that the business bank account has dropped. So in terms of assets, we are now down by 8,000 Rand because the bank account has been reduced by 8,000 Rand. 
But what is the other side? Where does the other transaction or the other side of the transaction, how does it affect the basic accounting equation? Is this equity? Has this changed Tim's portion of the business? Has this changed his, his share of the business? When we introduced the equity, I spoke about the fact that your equity is basically what's left when you take what the business owns minus what it owes. That hasn't changed in this capacity. The business doesn't owe anything. What does the business own? So in terms of equity, this has had absolutely no impact on Tim's share in the business. What about liabilities? This does not represent any future outflow that the business has to have. No future outflow is going to come from this. There's no present obligation for this. So this is zero. But this now doesn't make sense. We have assets that have been reduced by 8,000 and we have nothing else. The lawn mowers, however, represent assets. These are resources that are controlled by the entity and they are going to be used for Tim in the business. He's going to be using these to create future income. Therefore, these represent assets that are going to have economic impact in the future. They're going to bring an inflow of economic benefit and therefore our assets increase by 8,000 Rand as well. So although our net assets haven't changed, we can see that if you remember the format of your financial position, of the statement of financial position in study unit two, you'll realize that we disclose PPE separately. So what has happened is that 8,000 rands worth of value has moved out of the bank and it's moved into PPE. So in terms of assets, the effect is zero, but inside assets, we have moved around. So there is a possibility that one transaction can affect our basic accounting equation within the same element. Let's take a look at number three. He paid three and a half thousand rand from the business account, from the bank account, to Newmarket to design pamphlets for him to advertise the business. Advertising relates to expenses, so an advert is an expense. When you're dealing with transactions, as an exam technique, I would say one of the things that you can do first and one of the easier things to do is always ask yourself how it affects the bank account first. Sometimes it's a lot easier to start with the bank account and then move to the other side. So what impact does this have on the bank account? He's paid three and a half thousand rand, which means our bank account has dropped by three and a half thousand rand. So that's the first half, which means we now need to bring the other back into balance. In terms of advertising, as an expense, how does this impact our basic accounting equation? From study unit three, we learned that our expense is going to impact profit. Our expense is going to reduce our profit. We also learn that profit is going to impact equity. If we make a profit or if our profit is reduced, it means that the owner's portion of the business has been increased or decreased. And in this case, your expense is going to decrease the owner's portion of the business. Go back to study unit two or study unit three, sorry, and take a look at the definition of income and expenses and you'll see how and why this works. Very important that you understand the relationship between profit and equity. Number four, Tim purchased a bucky on credit from Payless Fleet for 95,000. This one's a little bit more interesting. In here, in number three, I said to you, always ask what happens to the bank first because it's easier to deal with. In this case, there is no impact on the bank. He hasn't taken money out of the bank. He hasn't put money in the bank. So there's no impact in the bank whatsoever. So this makes it a little bit tricky. What has he done though? He has purchased a bucky. So he has a bucky and he's now got credit from Payless Fleet. So nothing has affected the bank account, but he does have an asset. He has now got an additional vehicle. So in our vehicles, in our assets, we are now up by 95,000 Rand, the value of the asset in terms of his vehicles. What about the other side though? Does this affect the owner's share of the business? Does this affect equity? No, because the owner's portion of the business hasn't been changed. We said, remember, that your equity is basically what the company owns minus what it owes. In this case, what he has done is he has taken an asset that he hasn't paid for yet. There will be future outflows for this thing because at some point in time, pay this fleet is going to want their money back, which means that he has created a liability of 95,000 Rand. So his liabilities have increased. What he owes has increased. And we'll see that our equation is back in balance. Remember that your liabilities represent a present obligation that's going to result in a 
future outflow. If you're not comfortable with that, again, go back to study unit two and go look at that infographic that we put together for you to make sure you're comfortable with the definition of assets and liabilities. The last one I'm going to go through for now, he was paid 500 Rand for services rendered to B. Smith in cash. So he now has 500 Rand in cash. Again, our cash and our bank is always easy to deal with. So in terms of bank and cash, he now has an extra 500 Rand. So he's up by 500 Rand. How does this impact him though? Is this an asset? Is this equity? Is this liabilities? Services rendered will be his revenue. Revenue is his income which was going to affect his profit. His owner's share in the business has increased because he has made sales, he has income. So in this case, his equity is going to be increased by 500 and there is no liability and you can see our basic accounting equation is back in balance. For the rest of these transactions, I want you to work through them slowly. Rather go slowly now Understand your basics, understand and make sure that you're comfortable with how these impact and why these impact the elements and the items the way that they do. Because the next couple of stages we're going to work through are going to introduce new concepts that use this as a basis. And if you don't understand this, it means that you're going to have to study everything else off by heart. And that's quite dangerous because there's a very good possibility in the exam that they give you a transaction that you haven't seen before. And if you haven't seen it before, you're not going to know what to do with it unless you can break it down and ask yourself, why is this working the way it does and how do I deal with it based on my knowledge? So I would say there might be a possibility that you want to go and take a look at your basic accounting equation again, make sure you understand why it moves the way it does, make sure you're comfortable with the elements of the financial statements and what they mean and how to identify if something is an asset or is a liability or is equity, and make sure you're very comfortable with the relationship between profit and equity from study unit three. Once you're happy with that, go back and try the rest of the transactions here, and then you can follow my discussion and feedback as I go through the rest of them.